When I say Swiss cheese, you're probably thinking of this, the cheese with holes. At least that's what I thought for years. But when I started working in cheese, I found out that there are actually dozens of different cheeses made in the country of Switzerland. And cheeses made in that same style all over Europe, and actually now increasingly the United States. Let's get into what makes a cheese a Swiss Miss. All of the Swiss types share a firm, dense texture and a supple, pliable taste. The dominant flavors across all the cheeses in the Swiss Gateway are milk, but cooked milk. Think about a cup of sweet, warm milk or the flavor and aroma of browned butter. Toast and various kinds of roasted or toasted nuts are all universal flavors. Cheese people call this style alpine or cooked pressed cheese. Alpine refers to the cheese's origins. Alpine, mountainous areas of Europe. Cooked press refers to how they're made. During the cheese making process, the curds and whey are cooked. And that cooking process is what imparts all of that sweet, roasty, toasty flavor. After the whey gets drained off and the curd is pressed, that long, slow pressing is what gives you a really smooth, dense, but elastic texture. It's why these cheeses are gonna be firm, but they're never gonna be dry or grainy or hard. So what about flavor intensity in the Swiss gateway? What if you wanna go buy some Swiss types? What are you gonna look for? If you want something on the super approachable end of the spectrum, look for the real cheese with holes. Swiss Emmentaler is gonna give you those cooked milk and lightly toasted nut flavors. But I'd encourage you to look for something a little bit more complex. French Comté is one of the most delicious Alpine cheeses out there. Think warm croissants and just a little bit more toasted nut intensity. For people who like a bit more meatiness, smokiness, classic Swiss Gruyere is the one to look for. Anything that indicates an aged Gruyere is gonna give you something that's more complex and a bit meatier. And then at the most intense end of the spectrum, more in that pineapple, fruity, and caramelized onion world, look for a cheese called Hollerhocker, or one of my favorites that's made by a producer here in the United States, Springbrook Farm in Vermont. They make a cheese called Tarantase that's just fantastic. One of the things I really love about cheese is that if you know a little bit about the history of it, you can learn about a whole culture. By design, these are large wheels of cheese that are meant to age for a long period of time. They were invented to store summer milk so that it could be eaten later in the winter when everything was buried under snow. They all have these hard, thick, crusty rinds. The rind has been the barrier between the cheese and the air for typically six to 12 months. As a result, it's not typically recommended for eating. Also good to know is that because these are such aged cheeses, they can be made of raw or pasteurized milk, totally at the discretion of the cheesemaker. Many of the most famous Swiss types are made of raw milk exclusively. The texture of these cheeses is so special and important. These are among the best melters in the world of cheese. So if you think of every famous dish that melts cheese, chances are it originated in an Alpine area and it used a Swiss type cheese. Fondue, for example, or a croque-misseur, which is, you know, like the greatest hangover food ever invented. Just remember, if you're gonna buy some of these to melt, cut the rind off first. Cheeses in the Swiss gateway don't have to come from Switzerland. That's just the point of inspiration. So explore, get out of that one little country and find something that will be the melter of your dreams.